The day starts normally enough. You give your pet some food and water. But later, in your pet's water dish, you find this, a hair worm. It didn't get here on its own. It came out of a little cricket. Don't believe me? Okay. These hairworms are gnarly parasites. They actually control a cricket's mind to get to their home, the water. The hairworm's journey starts innocently enough in a river as an egg, one of many in this long string. The eggs grow into squiggly larvae, which get eaten by a mayfly larva that also lives in the river. And inside the mayfly is exactly where the hairworm needs to be. The hairworm uses this pointy part to burrow into the mayfly's flesh. Then it curls up and waits. Because really, it's not after a mayfly. It's after a cricket. So it sits tight while the mayfly larva turns into an adult and heads to dry land, where it just might get eaten by a cricket that has no idea what it's in for. Inside the cricket, the hairworm goes at it, eating all the cricket's stored up fat for about a month. The cricket loses its chirp, but the hairworm doesn't kill the cricket because the worm needs a lift back to the water. Crickets usually avoid bodies of water. They're not great swimmers. So the worm takes over, boosting chemicals in the cricket's brain, which make the cricket walk around mindlessly until it happens to reach water. Scientists in France watch this infected cricket make a beeline for the pool. the hairworm makes a break for it. Still going. Ugh, that's just, ugh. But don't worry, they don't target humans. Recombinant DNA technology. It is a technique where the selected DNA of one organism, that is the donor, is introduced to combine with the DNA of another organism called recipient organism. As a result, the recipient organism acquires the genetic abilities of the donor. Altering the genome of an organism by introducing genes of interest is known as gene manipulation or DNA recombinant technology. As this mechanism has the ability... Wow, we have another spotting of these little black strands that move on their own. How creepy is this? This time under a mask. And this appears to be from a second source. We already saw this before with a lab test swab. This looks like it's a brand new mask that's being opened up and put under a microscope. And you can see, just like we saw before on the test swabs, these weird black strands that seem to have a life of their own, making movements. Just absolutely horrifying. This was posted on the Julian Media House TikTok account. And here's the footage from the last video, full link down below. They pulled it out and put it under a microscope and there's all these little black strands that moved towards heat and reacted with water. And now we have here with the masks, a similar observation made by apparently a secondary source. So let me play all the clips. Just absolutely horrifying. So why are there all these little black strands that move around on both the masks and the testing swabs? 
This reeks of an agenda. An evil one. So as you can see, these moving threads or parasites or whatever these things are, are very similar from the mask to the swabs. Please let me know in the comments down below or email me at timtruth at protonmail.com if anybody has any information about what these are. This is Nicole. She's a nurse at BC Children's Hospital, and she's going to show you everything you need to know about how we do a test for COVID-19. Hi there. First, I always put on protective clothing like a mask, plastic eye shield, and yellow gown to keep everyone safe from germs. For your test, you might sit on your mom or dad's lap, unless you're a big kid. Then you might sit on a chair or exam table. I'll need to put this small swab into your nose. Can you see how skinny it is? It's specially designed to check for a virus that might be way at the back of your nose. You'll need to hold your chin up so the swab can reach the back of your nose. Mom, dad, or another grown-up might need to help you keep still during your test. You might like to plan what you want to do with your hands. Some kids like to hold a squishy ball or their favorite stuffed animal, or you might like to hold your parents' hands. I'll need to measure from your nose to your ear to know how far the swab needs to go inside. By the time you count slowly to five, the test should be over. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. Some kids say their eyes water and their nose feels warm or tinkly when they have this test. Kind of like when you get water up your nose or when you drink a really fizzy drink. And just so you know, having the test doesn't mean you have the virus. To be very frank, there's no politician in this country is going to disagree with their chief medical officer. Uh, they just aren't going to do it. They might as well throw a rope around their neck and jump off a bridge. They're done. I'm telling you the facts. It's very simple. I don't know why I bring all these papers. I never look at them. Oh, when you're giving numbers, I do. I go, oh, oh, oh. Why did I say that? Did you really say that? <laughs> I just say whatever they write down for me. <laughs> That's why you're guessing. I'm going to be very frank. There's no politician in this country is going to disagree with their chief medical officer. Uh, they just aren't going to do it. They might as well throw a rope around their neck and jump off a bridge. They're done. I'm telling you the facts. It's very simple. I don't know why I bring all these papers. I never look at them. Oh, when you're giving numbers, I do. I go, oh, oh, oh. I, that. Did you really that? <laughs> I just say whatever they write down for me. <laughs>